Hey, how are you? Did you think I was gone? Did you think the abyss had swallowed me whole? <laughs> well, uh, no, actually. I was eaten up by some handsome Geo Argon Peach booty boy so much that you'd think we're in a committed relationship by this point. Um, but anyway, for the tone of this video, it shall be a little different. Usually I'll answer the question right off the bat, but here I'm gonna take a step back and do a bit more of a story approach, as this is something a little bit more personal. So, I'm going to become a content creator, starting here with YouTube. So I have a few goals, um, one I can't control and one I can. The one that I can't really control and something I'm projecting for is by the end of 2021, I hopefully and would like to double my subscriber count. And currently right now it's around 35, so literally simple math, 35 plus 35 or 35 times two, 70. Poof, that would be amazing by the end of 2021. But the thing that I can control and I really am hoping to keep myself to is I want to upload one video every week. So those are my goals. But in order to get there, I have to start now. Starting now. And I really have to treat YouTube as a job. So some of you might be asking, well, Okay, uh, Kemi, why YouTube? Well, it's honestly something I've wanted to do for a long time now. And personally, I've kept denying myself the possibility that I could even be successful. I mean, before this point, I've watched tons of other YouTubers, content creators, giving their tips and tricks and bits and pieces on how to help make their channel grow and so on and so forth. And man, I've realized a lot of stuff already that I need to help improve. But that aside, I'm kind of wondering how many of you out there remember the moment you made this choice? I know I'm not the only person here. Um, so when did it dawn upon you? Was it a conscious effort like now, like I'm doing? Or did the opportunity present itself? Was YouTube a passion or a hobby and then it flowed and evolved into a kind of career? Or are you like me? Um, and you're deciding, I'm making a conscious effort and deciding I'm going to do this now and this is something I want and something I'm going to go for. And I also, so please, ask. I'm asking you guys, go ahead, please, write in the comments, tell me, tell me your stories. I would love to hear it. I would love to see that feedback. And on that note, I'm also wondering how many of you are watching this video in the year it was made? How many of you are just finding now, just now finding this video years later? If you're watching this years later, I mean, are you where I was? Um, and this video is really going to be a staple of this decision, this choice that I'm going to become a content creator. This is something I want to pursue and getting there will require a lot of work. Determination practically under tail levels of it, if not more. I feel like I've denied this calling throughout my life. Sometime last week, I watched a TED talk about becoming a YouTuber, and the lady speaking said, if you wanted to start a channel, you should have started seven years ago. And well, while yes, I do agree, on the other hand, here I am thinking, seven years ago, I was 21. Seven years ago, it was 2014. Granted, the video, the date that it was uploaded was sometime a couple of years back, but I'm talking about now in relation to this year. So 2014, that was nearing the end of my junior year in college. And I am not the same woman I was seven years ago. I held nor retained the confidence I have today. I didn't develop a healthy relationship with my mental health as of yet. And furthermore, I didn't know who I was. I was also in a bad relationship at the time, so there's that too. Now that I'm here, I think about all the previous times becoming a content creator or a YouTuber has popped up in my life. I probably talked about this in a different video, but regardless, did you know that this channel you are watching is my fourth attempt at YouTube? First time, I'm pretty sure I was about 13. 
And that was back in middle school. Ah yes, the old, the old years of YouTube. Back when the layout looked much more clunky and, and not as streamlined and clean and shiny. Um, yeah, I made, in when I was in middle school, I made like animated skits and I put them online. But after a while, I started growing very self-conscious of them. And I took my channel down. I was like, nope, not doing that, I took my channel down. And the second time, I was actually gonna be a dual channel. Now, this is way later, like years later, I wanna say maybe even a decade later since middle school, because the second time I was in college, and I was planning on doing a dual channel with my college sweetheart, and we never actually made it, and we were thinking on it, we were planning on it, but it never really launched because after the first recording, he looked at me and he said, you know, you're a lot funnier than you think you are. So I hesitated. Third time was another dual channel and this was actually made for those of you that might have been with me long enough or know me in my any of my inner circles you probably remember this channel that was up around 2018 for a very brief time but it was there it was alive and it was with a dear close friend of mine Tail Saria if you don't know who she is check her out love her love her content bless your amazing Tail Saria if you're watching this you're still awesome yeah but it just never took off because at the time, even though very frequent to today, we just didn't have the right headspace for it. And there was a lot of unnecessary pressure to keep up. And we just kind of flatlined and we looked at each other and we said, you know what, this was fun, it was great, but we're gonna, we're just gonna, you know, head our own separate ways. And that was fine. And so, here I am, fourth attempt, all on my own, and struggling, <laughs> struggling, damn it, to keep this thing going. So, I look back on myself, and I ask, why the hesitancy? Why did I hesitate? And a lot of it has to deal with these struggles. So, here they are in just plain number format form. First one was my parents, second one was what would everyone think, third one is it's risky, and the fourth and the biggest one is doubt. And there's probably going to be technically a fifth one, that's just a small excerpt about like, um, uh, energy, I guess, but that's just going to be a small little side blurb. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, number one, the first one is, um, yes, my parents, I wanted to share this decision, this idea to my mom and my dad and and just hoping I get the response of I support you I felt like if I had that if I just had that then it would give me the green light to go but I never asked and honestly I was afraid to ask so I never did I grew up with the mentality to find a stable career, so that way you could do what you love you, when you were off work. And this mentality shared by my parents was, was shared by their parents and so on and so forth. And the generation was to have a stable job, making that income to make ends meet and do what you love when you are off work. And so um, a content creator or a YouTuber was never seemed like a stable career to them and you know reasonably so i mean heck it didn't exist when they were my age when they're my age it didn't exist it was just something that um a lot of people of their generation like saw as like um in the most negative context and a very biased opinion of something that somebody would do like playing video games in their mom and dad's basement and I used to share this mentality a lot when I was growing up. I, and that kind of slowly begins to go into what would everyone think, but before I get so far ahead, uh, yeah, I refrained. I refrained of proudly announcing this decision because I didn't want to be judged. 
small little side note in regards to my parents. I actually had a conversation this past week with my father about this and I didn't exactly tell him what I was willing to be but basically after he and my mother discovered that I no longer want to pursue teaching um, he basically told me you're gonna have to have some time to sit down and try to figure out what you want to what you want to do and I told him and since this is still pretty fresh in my mind um, I think what I want to do isn't exactly what you want to hear and he picked up on the context and he basically told me which i granted is very very um realist of him but also very fatherly of him to basically say it doesn't it shouldn't matter what your mother or i would want you to do you are a grown woman, you are an adult, you are capable to make your own decisions and choices. Uh, he just, he's like, I am merely a compass. I can point or guide you to what I think is good for you and to what I think is better for you. But for you to take up those choices or that advice is up to you. And I might not exactly understand what all this whole thing is about and he gestured to my computer is and he's like but if this is something that you want to do and this is like your thing that you're into and becoming you know someone who makes videos and puts them up on the internet more power to you and then he also told me which again very realist very fatherly and very logic logistically of him thinking is for every thousands of people that have the same dream maybe one or two of them are the ones that are actually going to be successful in making it. And he has a point. There may be a moment, there may be a decision um, that I may have to come to when I try to make this channel, try to make it get off the ground of, do I keep doing this or do I stop and look for something else? And it's something that you'll have to wait and see. It's something that I still want to put my effort very much into, and I want to just go for it. And it's not like, you know, I'm not ignorant. It's not, I can dream, but I've always dreamt from a very realistic point. I've always kept my feet on the ground while my head are in the clouds, if that makes any sense. And so I want to still dream big, but if this doesn't take off, I am a survivor and I'm going to find something else to do. But in the meantime, I also remember one of the biggest pieces of vices from other channels that have always suggested is to not give up. Because sometimes you don't know when something is going to take off until after it does. And then you have the ability to look back and realize, wow, I can't believe I'm where I am today. And if I had given up a day or two before the pivotal moment in my channel's growth, then I wouldn't be there. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I really have to keep telling myself to help thwart that doubt is I gotta not give up. I gotta really apply myself. I gotta really keep doing what I'm doing where I have something, where I have a safety net such as nest eggs and um, a stable job and you know a family that I can um, depend on and a good inner circle that I have a good support system while I have that I gotta keep doing something that I believe in and I believe in this and I believe in this channel and I want to keep going all right side note over which goes into number two what would everyone think what would everyone think if they heard me going around proudly saying, what do you want to do with your life? Oh, I would love to be, I'm going to be a content creator slash YouTuber. And oh boy, depending on the pockets of people you announce that to, I can already, <laughs> I can already see looks of judgment and stares and, and that sort of thing, which is another big other reason of why I carried this idea that if I become a content creator, um, a YouTuber, 
and goes into the negative bias of would I be no different than somebody bumming off their parents in the basement, playing video games, and seemingly achieving nothing with their life. I've carried that bias because I felt like the moment I would announce such a decision, that's all I would get. That's all people would be able to look at me for. And it only grew to make me much more hesitant. Now granted, sure, I have friends, don't get me wrong, this isn't everybody, I can't speak for everybody, it's just that negative connotation that makes me have anxiety over. But I have friends in my inner circles, friends and family, who really think I should go for it. And honestly, thank you guys so much for believing in me and helping me to keep going. And so I think it's mostly like I kept struggling with what others, let alone my family, would think, so... I hesitated. I was afraid to keep going. And then going into, whoop, yeah, number three, yeah, it's, it's risky. Don't get me wrong, it's risky. Granted, I am not in a situation where I cannot drop my day job to pursue this passion. I'm not financially stable, and granted, I know how to budget, but I definitely, during this time and during this stage in life that I feel I could speak globally where being employed is very, very scary. We're in some trying times right now that, yeah, there's no way I'm going to just suddenly drop my day job cold turkey and decide I'm going to pursue this and pursue my passion because I understand my limits and that definitely is one of them because it is risky. And true, on one hand, I don't exactly like the idea, and this is another reason why I hesitated. I just, it kind of felt like I would become a slave to the algorithm and the monetization gods. And then I began, well, I had to backtrack, I had to think, well, wait a, wait a second, is that no different than like having a boss or a manager and working under them? So it was like, technically, your boss would just change from a person into the algorithm and monetization gods. <laughs> so is that really so different? And I was like, okay, logic, fair point. But then another issue would come up of the risk. And so um, then logic pesters me of being like, well, you know, Akemi, what about them taxes? And, you know, YouTube doesn't have an HR or a union for that matter, yada yada yada. You could be treated more as a machine to crank out content instead of a real person. And <laughs> that, that really started to wear on me. And at the same time, yes, there are those levels of risks of like, you know, you would basically become self-employed, so you'd have to know how to do your taxes. And of course, there is no HR or union. And this is kind of one of those things too, that technically if the internet just, just kapooted one day, just, just disappeared, there would go all of my stuff. There would go all of my way to make a living, that there is a level of I should have something to fall back on. And at the same time, it gets me nervous about the risk to even take the steps toward this process. And of course, there's another small side note of, if this, this job, what if it risks my current job? What will happen then? And I, I use in the context of, I remember um, I was watching a small little like recommended thing popped up on my feed and it was talking about a lady who started a TikTok and a t and her TikTok was her pastime and you might know her you might not know her but she was um, referred to on TikTok for a while as the gumbacha girl she did a reaction of drinking the drink gumbacha and that that just took off and she became fairly popular for it and fairly well known for it that it actually did end up interfering with her real job and if I'm remembering correctly, please quote me. If I'm wrong, please give me the accurate information. I don't want to spread misinformation, but from what I recall, she was a bank teller at the time. She was pursuing to become an accountant and then this fun little thing she did on the side, just BAM! just interrupted that whole process and maybe not overnight but interrupted that process and before she knew it she was getting called in and they were basically like yeah 
you see, we're gonna have to let you go because you either decide to do this thing on your sideline or you decide to have this real job. And that's what, granted, that's my interpretation of it and that's what it really felt like. And of course, I realize that that is also a risk on my end with my current job is, uh, I'm not gonna exactly say what my current job because, you know, privacy reasons. But I do understand that with my current job and then this side passion that I hope at some point to, you know, become a content creator and make a living from, there's always that possibility that the two might may cross roads and it can get hairy scary. And so it's, the risk is scary. And, but at the end of the day, I tell myself it can be worth the trade-off. It can be worth the trade-off. In fact, after I analyzed those risks, like um, the day that I realized I'm going to become a content creator and I'm going to become a YouTuber and this is something I really want to do and I'm really excited for it, guess what? The next day after I slept on that decision, all this existential, overwhelming dread just seeped into my bones and that day at work, I like my brain started going down the spiraling staircase of decision could be bad. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. And at the same time, I can recall there was a similar moment in my life when I felt the same thing. Now this is small again, going into a little bit of story time. Um, side tangent. When I felt the same way was when I decided to quit my retail job back in 2018. I decided I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna quit Hobby Lobby. And it was a then and there moment decision. And oh, I never recommend this. Looking back on it, I realized that this is actually really bad to do. So for any of those of you that are in a job and it's really crappy, never, 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 ever, ever do what I did. And what I did was I basically quit cold turkey. I just walked. And granted, I'm in a state where that's allowed and you won't really suffer as many repercussions from it, but so social-wise, it can look really bad on a resume. But that's what I did. I came into work Monday, if I remember, and then I said, I'm not dealing with this anymore. And I walked and I didn't come back to work. I didn't give my two weeks resignation notice. And that's bad, you guys, that's really bad. And even though Monday, leaving that Monday, I felt so confident. I felt amazing. I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulders. And I felt proud of myself for taking initiative to be like, you know what? I am unhappy and I'm going to do something about it. And I did. And then immediately the next day, all of that logic came in and everything started trying the weight the severity started to try to crush me of oh my goodness what did you do this is bad and i got really nervous about oh no oh crap i just gave up a stable job with decent enough income and and all for what and now looking back on it, I have to say, so far in my life, quitting that retail job has been the ballsiest move I have ever done. <laughs> and I hope that I don't make as many ballsy moves like that because that certainly was very, very risky. But I looked at my logics. I knew that I had enough of a nest egg saved up. I knew how to budget my time and my money and I ripped and teared through job searches to get a job. And then sure enough, afterwards that same year, definitely a couple of months later after the summer was over, I did get a job, another job and I was a janitor for a couple of short months before I got into my current job. Anyway, thank you for that small little tangent. Appreciate you listening. Appreciate you still being here. So this goes into lastly, the fourth and if not the biggest reason why I'm struggling with this decision and why I'm hesitant is doubt. Doubt. Evil, evil doubt. And in the end, the biggest enemy, the biggest person to impede upon my progression towards this is myself. I am the biggest obstacle. 
So all of those other attempts that I had to start YouTube, all those other three attempts stopped because I doubted myself. I doubted my capabilities, I doubted my worth, I just doubted anything and everything, and I stopped. And that hurt me in more ways than one. And it hurt my channel, it hurt my content. And so now that I've developed a better relationship with myself and my mental health, I feel like I'm ready. I am ready for this. And granted, sure, being 28 going on to 29, almost 30, and actively deciding I'm gonna become a content creator is a little intimidating. Basically, that goes into the small, tiny fifth blurb of the struggling of energy. There was a small side blurb I wanted to talk about struggling is the energy level. Because I feel, are any of you, granted, I want you to comment below. I want you to tell me. I want to g get your feedback. Because I'm an older individual deciding on this decision. But some of you who might have full-time jobs and are becoming a content creator, a YouTuber, a webcomic, whatever passion you are pursuing... What is your energy level like? And I feel like years ago, even seven years ago, I would have the energy to do a full-time job, come home, and then do my passion until odd hours of the night, like 2, 3, 4 a.m. and maybe only get five to six hours of sleep, and then repeat the cycle, baby! Just repeat the process over and over again. But now that I'm you know, a little bit older, getting closer to 30, and granted, 30 is the societal age of like, oh, if you haven't made it when you're 30, you haven't done anything with your life, and oh my goodness, I can't believe it, yada, 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 yada. But there is a definite notice of, wow, my energy level has changed, and not the energy level of, I'm saying, like, wanting to do this and being excited to do this, that type of energy. I'm like talking physical energy level. Like I come home from work and I don't feel it in me to want to record, which is why I'm hoping to record more on the weekends, if not Friday night, because I know I can sleep over into um, the next day that I can sleep in. But yes, energy level, that is another thing. And I think that goes into the small little finite inner workings of knowing what works for you. Because what works for other people might not work for everybody. And I'm gonna struggle. Oh boy, am I gonna struggle because I have to try to balance everything else in my life. And the full-time job isn't even the you know total extent of it. There's knowing how to balance relationships. There's understanding that there is gonna be sacrifice involved. And whether you like it or not, there's gonna be sacrifice, considering you could be sacrificing a relationship, you could be sacrificing your health. There is something that you are gonna be putting on the back burner to make this active decision. And I feel like a lot of people don't really fully understand, if not realize that. It's so simple, and granted, I'm the type of person who is like, I can do it all! And you wanna do it all, and you wanna have it all. But then you realize later, oh, oh snap. Oh, biscuits. I cannot have it all. I cannot do it all. I gotta manage my time better and I gotta find that that rhythm. I gotta find that sweet spot and I gotta balance. I gotta figure out my balance. So yeah. <laughs> and and I and granted, there's that small little question of, am I too old to do this? But then again, I remind myself that there is a grandma on this platform. Don't know if you guys know, but there is a lovely grandmother on this platform who loves to play Skyrim. And I don't know if she's still here. Somebody please tell me who this lovely old lady is who plays Skyrim on YouTube. And she likes her introduction, if I remember correctly, is like she likes to call everybody her grandchildren and she just seems like the sweetest old lady. I need to find her content. I need to subscribe, dang it. I need to support. But um, she is just, she's a lovely old grandma. So you know what? Nuts to age social norms. I am gonna be a content creator. I am gonna be an entertainer, a YouTuber. Because after all, if a caterpillar doesn't struggle, It'll never become a butterfly. 
So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for listening to me. This has been a very nice like heart to heart and I hope you guys can agree. Please tell me your thoughts, your opinions, some of the things that you may have struggled with or come across in your attempt to pursue your passion, your dream. I would love to hear it. I would love to see it below. Please support me in this amazing journey to become this content creator in which I really want to be. Like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, contact me on my other socials if you'd like to, look at my other socials as I do comics as well as some crafts and a couple of other things, but those are on that platform over there for a reason. And I hope to see you all next time. And remember everybody, be awesome, be you. Akemi, out.